Good morning. Here we are, church. Uh, who'd ever guess we'd be worshiping this Sunday morning, sitting in front of our computer screen. I'm glad God gave us this technology. We may be doing it for a while, but we will be doing it. Sharing together, worshiping together, studying the word of God together. But most of all, in these days, we live being the hands and feet of Christ in our neighborhood. It's really time for us as individuals and families to reach out to our neighbors, to share the love and joy and the hope and courage we have in Christ. So let's just open a word of prayer. Father, would you just open our eyes and ears spiritually that we might hear what your spirit would have to say to us this morning as we continue the study of your word and worship you on this Lord's day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, uh, we have been talking about uh, this journey that we've been taking through life, and uh, it's a great journey. It's got a lot of twists and turns. It's got a lot of uh, roadblocks and a lot of, lot of uh, trials and troubles. Jesus said that. He said, in this world, you'll have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I want to know this. Does anybody like waiting? I mean, does anybody really enjoy it? When I think about waiting, I think about the line at the pharmacy, maybe the checkout line at Walmart. How about the DMV? I mean, before they went to this appointment only, I mean, you could have had a survival show in there. You wait so long. But here's a big one. How many of us struggle waiting on God? Waiting for God to act, waiting for God to answer a prayer, waiting for God to intervene in a loved one's life. You know, we've been looking these past weeks at the 15 Psalms in the book of Psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. These were the Psalms that God gave pilgrims, the Jewish pilgrims, as they made that long, hard journey to the holy city, Jerusalem. Three feasts, God commanded them to come. And for most, it was a long and very dangerous journey. And God gave them these songs to fill them with hope, strengthen them, encourage them. I tell you what, these songs are good for us today, almost a thousand years later. In the times that we live now, they're great songs to sing. I remember God's love and provision and protection. Today, we're looking at another Psalm of Ascent, Psalm 130. Let's read this psalm together. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there's forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Listen, God knew that this pilgrimage was going to be hard, and there would be desperate times, desperate times. And so God in this song reminds him, as he reminds us today, that when we go through desperate times, we're to cry out to him with heartfelt prayer. Out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. Verse 1. Listen, do you do that? You ever had that time? You ever been so desperate that regular prayers just didn't seem to work? These are prayers that come out of your heart and out of your soul because they're unfixable. No human power or might is going to bring the answer. So when the road gets hard and tough, we want God to intervene. And God says, man, you need a miracle. You need to cry out to me. This kind of prayer is very different than our normal praying. Oh, God bless Pete. God bless Sam. God bless Mary. God bless the dog. No, this kind of praying happens when we realize that the only answer, the only way that things will turn out right is if God moves and comes and saves the day in a powerful way. You know, as we talk about waiting for God, we know God's time is always perfect. I mean, theologically in our head, we say it all the time, but it's in our hearts. We feel deeply that each passing moment 
every hour, every day, when God has moved, gets worse and worse. And we get desperate. And this kind of praying, God loves. He loves the desperate prayer, the desperate cry. Down on our knees, down on our face, tears gushing, hands lifted to God. Total surrender. Oh, God, save my boy. Please have mercy on him, O oh Lord. Look at verse 2. Read it with me. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears, O oh Lord, be attentive to my cry for mercy. See, this kind of praying is speaking out your, your, your words. You're crying out to God. I mean, it's out loud. Not only do you hear, probably people around you might hear it too. Lord, hear my voice. And what is he crying out for? And we're to cry out for mercy. Mercy. Because when we come into his presence, we know that we're not right with him. And we need his mercy, his sympathy, his forgiveness, his kindness, his grace. I love the next verse, verses three and four. Read it with me. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there's forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, fear, and serve you. See, whenever we come into the presence of God, and prayer does this, this is coming into his presence, it's inevitable that we feel unclean. We get dirty in life. I mean, spiritually, with sin and compromise. And that's why we need to confess our sins. We need to confess them to God and receive his forgiveness and get cleaned up again, living life for him again. John writes in his epistle, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. See, God reminds his people in this song they sing that it's safe to come to him. Because even though we sin, if we confess and ask forgiveness, God cleanses us through the work of Jesus on the cross. And that God's forgiveness is so beautiful because he keeps no record or scoreboard of wrongs on us. He has no file on Bill Thomas. And there you can find every sin I've ever committed or thought or things left undone I should have done. See, when we ask forgiveness, God chooses to forget our sins. One of the most beautiful psalms comes in Psalm 103, verse 12. God has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. It's amazing, isn't it? Listen, have you ever prayed, confessing your sin like this? Lord, I did it again. I did it again. I can't believe I did that same stinking thing again. And God just says, what thing? What did you do? He keeps no record of wrongs. Full of grace, God chooses to forget. It's not that God is forgetful. I mean, he could remember if he wanted to. But in this area of our sins and confession, he chooses not only to forgive, but to forget and keeps no score of wrongs. You know, God tells us that's the way we're supposed to love others. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. And listen, and it keeps no record of being wronged. I love to read that at wedding ceremonies. And I say to the couple, this is how you are to love each other. And that's true. But it also tells us how God loves us, how God keeps no record of our wrongs. So we have this desperate need. We're crying out to God for mercy. And we confess our sins and know we are forgiven. Now look at verses 5 through 7. Read it with me. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. Listen, waiting on God is a powerful truth found throughout the Bible. And where we get it wrong is we think that waiting is passive. Well, I guess I'll just sit here and wait. Wait for God to act. Maybe I'll read. Maybe I'll check my Facebook or shoot Instagram. Out. I don't know. I'll play a game on my phone, just waiting here doing nothing. That's not what waiting on the Lord is about. Waiting on God is active. It's work. It's putting your faith into action. The first thing we've learned from this scripture is we're to cry out to God in prayer. Don't take matters in our own hands. Let the Lord work and do his good will. 
Look at the second half of that verse. And in his word, I put my trust. I put my hope. Waiting on God means waiting expectantly, hopefully, expecting God to act on your behalf. Waiting is trusting God's word, the Bible, and hoping in his promises. I've heard different speakers say that throughout the Bible, there's six to 7,000 promises of God. Just find one and hang on to it. Hope in his word, trust in his word. God's not a liar. He always keeps his word and he's a promise keeper. How's this for a promise when you're waiting on God? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. Any of you feeling a little weary in this battle? Hebrews chapter 13, verse five. God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Here's a wonderful one out of Mark chapter 10, verse 27. With man, this is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. And then one of my favorite, I've heard others quote it too. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 and, and on. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they'll not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I would add that. The coronavirus in that whole mix too. God is our protection and our source and our strength. Number three, while you're waiting on God, let hope fuel your faith. In your word, I put my hope. Now, hope fuels faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the great definition of faith. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So don't ever give up hope. I know it can get hard after a while when things don't see God moving and uh, maybe the person you're praying for isn't changing, but you've got to hang on to hope. See, hope is the blueprint, the desired outcome. Faith is the building material that gets it done. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23 says, I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Number four, while waiting on the Lord, Reflect on all the times God rescued you and answered you and was faithful to you in the past. Habakkuk, in his uh, great book, in prayer, offers this news. He says, this prayer was sung by the prophet Habakkuk. I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. Can I ask you a question? Has God been faithful to you in the past? And nothing has changed. He will be faithful to you now because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Fifth and finally, while you're waiting on God, keep walking with the Lord. Keep doing what you know God has called you to do. Keep praying. Keep reading the Bible. Keep going to church. Worship, fellowship, share your burdens. Allow others to wait with you. Keep serving. Keep giving your life away. And in God's perfect timing, he will answer. Listen, wait on God's heart, but the reward is amazing. Instead of taking matters into our own hands, we cry out to God in prayer, trust, and hope. Hope in his word and wait on the Lord for his answer and his power. One of my favorite verses comes out of Isaiah chapter 40. Let me read the entire scripture to you, verses 28 through 31. Have you never heard, have you never understood that the Lord is the everlasting God and creator of all the earth? He never grows weary, never grows weak. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. That's my life verse. It's the one I put in my profile on the website. It meant a lot to me when I used to be a runner, but it means even now more. As I'm in the probably the fourth quarter of my life, if we trust in him, and we wait on him. 
God will move on our behalf. We'll run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for all the things that you have given to us, even now in this, what seems to be a darkening time. We lift up and pray a prayer for our world, that there are families with mourning uh, in their midst with loved ones who are struggling with the disease. Lord, there's fear everywhere. And we know the Bible says, perfect love cast out fear and you are perfect love. Lord, we pray that you would give us all courage, that you would give us a boldness, that you would open our eyes to the many, many opportunities that are presenting themselves right around where we live with our neighbors, the people we see. Help us reach out to them. And Lord, I know there are people right now in our family and congregation, uh, people watching this video who are crying out to you as they wait for you to move on their behalf, maybe for a loved one, maybe for a son or daughter, a grandson, granddaughter, maybe for a spouse. It might have to do with relationships. It might have to do with career and jobs. It might have to do with health. Lord, we desperately cry out to you. We lift up our voice to you and cry out for mercy. And we're going to wait for you. We know that all things are yes in you. And that we're more than conquerors in Jesus. So we can put our faith and trust fully in him. Now listen, if you've never done that, if you've never given your life and your heart to Jesus Christ, don't wait. Do it now. Just ask God to forgive you. Recognize that on the cross, Jesus died for you and your sins and believe in your heart. Speak the words with your lips. Jesus now is my Lord and Savior. And he'll come and live inside you and live for him now all the days of your life. You can pray that prayer anytime. Pray it now if you haven't ever done it before. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have a, a lot of things that we're doing. The council, your virus awareness team that we've put together. And uh, we are looking at three major areas. Uh, one of them is just your health and safety. Uh, when we come back to worship, uh, the things that uh, we are doing, there'll be protocols in place. That, so you know that it'll be a safe place to come, safe place to be. Secondly, we're very concerned about the connectiveness of our church family. Uh, even though we can't go into the building, hey, we know church is the body of Christ. It's not about a facility. We love our facilities, but that's not who we are. This is who we are. So we want to stay connected first with our own church family. So be aware, be looking at emails. We're going to be setting up phone trees and other type of things that we're all going to be involved in helping one another. It's very important. Secondly, though, we're not just concerned about our own family. We're concerned about our neighbors, our neighborhood, places where we live and, and work. And so be open to those opportunities where you can share. You know, if you've been to the grocery store, you've known that there are so many things that are out of stock. Um, some of you might have surplus. Share with your neighbors. There are people in our church and outside our church who are those vulnerable categories. They can't go out on their own and pick up their uh, prescriptions. And those are things we can do as neighbors. If we do this right, this is an opportunity for people to see the love of Christ. And they'll wonder. And we'll be able to share with them. It's because of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to do that. Again, the connectiveness that we're going to have is going to be multifaceted. But please read emails. Please be looking at our Facebook, please be checking our website. That's our major way of communicating. We are going to be uh, looking again at making phone calls, uh, but we just want to make sure that we are staying connected and up to date with the latest things that are happening uh, as far as our church response uh, to this virus. Uh, in closing, uh, let me just say this. Our office is going to be open Tuesday through Friday, shortened hours from 11 to 2, but 
we want you to make sure that uh, you do your business either online or through email. If you have something that needs face-to-face -face, uh, approval or meeting a need, we ask that if you come to the office that you are not sick or you don't have loved ones at home who are sick. Uh, we don't want to um, put our staff at, at risk with that. So please use good, good judgment. In closing, I want to pray a prayer uh, found in a book of prayers called Prayers That Avail Much. And this prayer is a multitude of scriptures woven together, promises from God that we can speak back to God and speak in our hearts. It's called a prayer for hedge of protection. And uh, people use that terminology for uh, prayers of building spiritual walls, a fortress around us. So I want to lead you in this prayer, and then I'll give you a blessing. And um, you may want to, at home, sing a couple songs together, share a few testimonies. You don't have to stop worship just because the video is over. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Hereford Faith and Life Church to you and our communities, and we pray a hedge of protection around them. We thank you, Father, that you're a wall of fire around about us, that you set your angels around about us. We thank you, Father, that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We say of you, Lord, you are our refuge and fortress. In you, we will trust. You cover us with your feathers, and under your wings, we will trust. We'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made us your children and we have made you and declared you our Lord, you are our refuge and fortress. No evil shall befall us, no accident will overtake us, neither shall any plague or calamity come near us, for you give your angels charge over us to keep us in all your ways. Father, because you set your love upon us, you will deliver us. And we will call upon you and you'll answer us and you'll be with us in trouble and will satisfy with a long life and show us your salvation. Not a hair of your head shall perish. Well, that was our first stab at it. And I want you again to know that we love you. We're praying for you. And there are people now working for you and uh, praying for you too. And, and, and we will get through this together. Um, I, I know that, there's no doubt, but we wanna do it well. We wanna use the opportunity that God gives us to reach our neighbors and friends. Imagine going through this without a hope, without God, without the rock of Christ to put our, our strength and, and, and courage in. So please share, be looking at ways to love and care for your neighbor. And again, read your emails, check the website, Facebook. There'll be a lot of ways that we'll be connecting with one another. Look out for one another, care for one another, pray for one another. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you more later. Bye-bye.